Hi friends, this is Apostle Misha Softier, um, and this is a rather informal session this morning of our study in the Word. It's the morning study in the Word with Misha Softier, and this morning I want to talk about where we're at right now, where we're at right now. And I'm uh, ministering to you from our new home in Yuma, uh, Arizona. We're still in the process of uh, setting things up and a lot has to be done. As a matter of fact, uh, if you're watching, I may have to get up and answer the door because I've still got people coming in and doing things as we're making our move. So I may have to step away, um, but I'll be back. And um, I just wanted to encourage you this morning in your relationship with the Lord as you get ready to go to work and as you get ready to take on the day this morning to lift up your spirits and worship the Lord. I really believe that it helps when we begin each day, not just with a cup of coffee. Go have your coffee and eat your breakfast and do whatever you do, but spend a moment just worshiping and glorifying the Lord. Now I'm going to turn this and I want to show you something. It's against my wall. I hope we can see it. If I turn this right, you should be seeing a sign that says home on it, H-O-M-E. Um, and um, let's see if I got pray that I got it all. There we go, I won't know until I look back since I'm on camera operator here. Okay, so home. And <clears throat> some may be thinking this morning that you have no home. Some may wish that you had a home. And I looked at the sign on my own house here, home. But when I looked at it, I looked at it differently. I saw it and I thought, what a wonderful thing it'll be when we go to heaven and where we enter in the gates of heaven and we see that sign on that mansion that God has prepared for us that says home. We're finally home at last after enduring and going through this journey on li in life here on earth, we'll finally be home. Now, as I begin the study today, um, uh, I need you to excuse me for any sniffles that I had. I had a little bit of allergies and a head cold. Uh, and I actually lost my voice for about um, uh, a few days and um, everything is just coming back to me now. So just ignore it, okay? So this morning what I would like to do, because this is just an informal time of, uh, of getting together and studying God's word together, which I, I'd like all of us to do. I'm not here this morning to preach to you. But uh, let's just uh, be informal about this. Everybody relax. And I want to take a few moments just to give God praise this morning in worship. And uh, if you have a prayer language, let's pray together in, in the spirit this morning. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you Lord and I lift you up there is none like thee I love you Lord and I lift my voice praise praise God you just, you just want to sing to him. You just want to worship him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Okay. All right. It's nice seeing you. Okay. I'm doing a broadcast, so I'll let you do whatever you need to do. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. So, I want to welcome all of you this morning to our study in the Word. And I know this is being watched worldwide. And... We're going to have a, a good time this morning. I want to make a few announcements for those that are in the state of California. As many of you know, if you don't know, my family and I have moved to Yuma, Arizona, and we're living there now. That's going to be our new home, although no, we believe that God is going to open up uh, ministry doors here in Yuma. We also uh, will continue our ministry in California. And so for those in California wondering where I will be, uh, I want to encourage you that we'll be continuing as the Lord allows and as he leads to make appearances. Maybe there won't be as many as I, I normally do, but we're going to work it out with the pastors of every church that I speak at and Open, uh, make sure that the doors stay open to continue, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to continue to minister there. Okay, so this morning, if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you all turn to, to uh, all of you to turn to Matthew chapter 24. And this is such a great uh, scripture to begin with when we think about as we wake up, and as I, as I woke up this morning, I was sitting there thinking, God, you know, where are we now? When, when will you come? When will I hear that, that, that shout that comes from heaven, you know, or, or, and, and, and see you caught up and be caught up, I mean, see myself caught up with you and see the saints caught up with you and that, that glorious return of the Lord and uh, the, the, the time that he comes for his saints. And I think it's just gonna be a, a spectacular time, but I don't think we're that far off. And so I wanna read from Matthew 24 about the signs of Christ's return. Beginning verse one, Jesus came out from the temple and he was going away with his, dis and, and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. And he said to them, do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will be torn down. Now, this is important, listen to this, okay. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will, be these, when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Now, many people seem to equate the uh, tearing down of the temple with the sign of the Lord's return. And many believe that he actually returned during his transfiguration, you know, also. But both of those things are not true. I mean, that wasn't the rapture. That wasn't the second coming of Christ. He appeared during the transfiguration to the, to some of his disciples, yes. And um, the Bible tells us that when it says not one stone shall be left upon another, folks, that doesn't signify that the Lord would return before the destruction of Jerusalem or the destruction of, of the temple. The temple was destroyed in about 70 AD when Titus came through and destroyed the temple. But if you notice... The question is asked after that occurred. He makes the comment that not, not one stone will be le uh, left upon another that will not be torn down. And that's what happened. 
Titus literally came in and he destroyed all of Jerusalem. Okay, but then we see in verse three, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, okay, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these signs happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Okay, um, the, the, the literal translation of the end of the age is the consummation of all things, the consummation of the age. So we, we know we're not talking about just a time that happened back in the uh, New Testament period when the Lord was living uh, amongst his disciples, but we're talking about the very consummation of the age that we live in today. And Jesus answered, he talked about what we would expect to see or what we should expect to see in the times that we're living in even now towards the consumption of this age. And he answers in verse four, Jesus answered them and said, see to it that no one misleads you for many will come in my name saying I am, in the, I am the Christ and will mislead many. And we've seen that folks. We have seen our periods particularly in the 70s and the 80s and in the early 90s of the many, many cults that there, there seemed to be a plague, a plague of cults uh, where people were coming up saying, I am I'm the Messiah, I'm the disciples, I mean, you're my disciples, I'm the new Messiah, and, and so forth and so on. He said, tell us when these things will uh, be and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And he said, see to it that many, or that no one misleads you. Many will come to me in my name and saying, I am the Christ and mislead many. And we've seen that happening will continue and become progressively worse during the times that we're living in now. Then verse six, we see this, okay, you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you are not frightened for these things must take place, but that is not yet the end. And folks, we're seeing more wars and more rumors of wars than we've ever seen in the world since the beginning of the world. Almost every country in the world is in line with somebody and at odds with somebody and there's continual threat in the news and things of the war. Now, it says, see to it that you're not frightened Okay, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But these are not yet, these are, these are yet, are, these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. Well folks, we've seen all of these things, nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and folks, that's happening now more than it's ever happened, okay? There'll be signs in various places that there'll be famines and we're, we, we see the COVID-19 and we've seen SARS and we've seen so many of different, the different viruses that have happened and it seems to be on an increase that there are plagues and various famines and, and, and things that are taking place. We're seeing starvation in places that had never occurred before. Uh, the Lord gave me a vision, I believe, in August 6th of 2019 that has since come to fulfillment in many places. And one of them was that we would begin to see starvation even in America. And folks, that's already happening in many, many parts of this country. And I think we're only going to see this in an increase. The Bible also says that there will be famines and earthquakes. Okay, but all these things are... Now listen, this is important. All these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. So there will be the person that's listening that'll say, you know, Apostle Misha, everything that you're reading may be true, but you know, we've always had wars and rumors of wars. We've always had this, some types of famine. Well, you remember the uh, smallpox, the smallpox and, these and the polio and these plagues and so forth and so on. We've had plagues, we've had starvation. Look at the people in India and, and so forth and so on. All these things have always happened. True, It's been true that since the fall of Adam, as a matter of fact, and the man 
was cursed because of his disobedience to the Lord. And the Bible says that by the sweat of the brow that the man would work and in childbirth the woman would give pain. There began the, the lifespan of men that was hundreds, almost a thousand years, began to decrease to a hundred years, to 70 years. And, 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 and because of sin entering in the world, things began to decline and began to go backwards. So we've always had these pangs and these birth pangs and these things that were taking place uh, going on, okay? But I think it's important for us to see, or, or we've always had the famines and earthquakes. It's important for us to see though that all these things are merely the beginning, the beginning of birth pangs. And I wanna focus in on that, the beginning of birth pangs, okay? Throughout the time, throughout this, this world, we have had birth pangs, we've had contractions. Before a woman gives birth, she goes through a contraction period, she begins to contract, her body begins to have contractions, and right before birth, those pangs, they become more intense, and they become more rapid, they may start slowly with one here, and maybe another one there, and then another one there, and another one here, okay? But as uh, time becomes closer and closer for the woman to give birth, the contractions begin to become more rapid. They begin to speed up, get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until boom, new birth has come. And this is what we're seeing. So yes, all those things have always taken place, but they were the beginning of birth pangs, folks. And now we're seeing a rapidity, a rapidness, a speeding up of those birth pangs until pow, the end comes and we see the return of the Lord. And, and that's so powerful. And then the Bible goes on to talk about what will happen during these times. It says <clears throat> here in verse eight, but all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Well, folks, there are various degrees of tribulation. And try and tell some of the people in India and in Pakistan and in Africa that are losing their heads for the word of God that they're not going through tribulation. Folks, there are people all over the world that are dying already for the word of Christ. Folks, America has been free of persecution and we have isolated ourselves in and have come up with a false sense of security that it can never happen here without an awareness of what's taking place in so many other countries around us. People are already giving their lives for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell them that they'll not experience tribulation. They're already going through it. And the Bible says that they will deliver you to, to tribulation and will kill you and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. I think one of the things that we're seeing when we bring this message where we're at today, one of the things that we're seeing in this country today is that we're beginning to see a hatred of the people of Christ, the hatred of Christ. It says they will deliver you to tri a tribulation and they will kill you and you will be, listen to this, you will be, uh, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. It seems like there has always almost become a hate Christ club among the world for Christians, for Christians and for Jews. We're seeing an increase, an increase of anti-Semitism in the world today. We're seeing an increase in the same way that the Holocaust began and I'm Israeli and I understood what happened to my relatives and how it began through social, not through social media, but when media they had there, they began poking fun at Christians and making fun. They all Jews were, I'm sorry, poking fun at the Jews, making fun of them. They were painting up signs and hanging them up and Jews were uh, de depicted as rats and that we bred like rats and we're all over the place. And pretty soon we were a cause of the crash of the economy in Germany because the Jews were hoarders and we kept all the money to ourselves and we kept things within our communities and because of this other people in Germany and other countries were suffering and pretty soon we became the scapegoats of not only Germany and not only Poland but the world. 
Okay, and we're seeing similar things if you pay attention to the news and pay attention to media. We're seeing similar things taking place right now. Okay, so, you know, folks, these things are happening now and you need to see them. It's not just something that's going to happen in the future, but they're already here. They're already here. I'm going to read it again. They'll deliver you to tribulation and will kill you and you'll be hated by all nations because of my name, okay? Again, you go to Pakistan, you go to India, you go to Nigeria, you go to many places in Africa. Folks, they're already losing their heads for the name of Christ. People being, are being locked up in churches and the churches are being burned down. There's already persecution madness in many, many countries throughout the world. In China, if you're caught with a Bible, it means death or it means a, a life or long-term hard time labor imprisonment, okay, uh, to be a Christian. The cost of being a Christian all over the world is, um, uh, it's already there. It's the, the, the persecution, the, um, the penalties that one pays are already there and they're coming here to America. We're seeing a growing, growing hostility of what it means to be a Christian and to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? It, the, the Bible goes on to say that when this occurs, verse 10, at, at that time, at the time that this persecution begins to occur, at the time that it becomes unpopular to be a Christian, and folks, that's what we're beginning to see here. I remember back in the 70s and the 80s, the Jesus songs were popular. They were making the hit parades. They were making even secular radio in the top 10. It was popular to sing the songs of Jesus and to be a Christian. And it was popular to go to church. Matter of fact, I remember in the 60s and 70s uh, growing up that in order to get a job in your community, you, it was important to be a, a church-going person. If you were a church-going person, you were considered an upstanding citizen. Folks, today, you know, it's an, an anathema. It's a... It's almost a, uh, you're almost looked down upon if you attend church. We've gone a complete upside down, topsy-turvy uh, situation in the world today. All right, so things have changed and you need to see where there are. You can't allow the enemy, the, the devil to put a blinder on you so that you can't see. Okay, and again, if you're hearing noise in the background, excuse me, I'm in my new home in Yuma and uh, we're getting set up. And I'm, so I'm, I'm staying over here while they do some work. And um, we're still transitioning over. Okay? So, continuing, okay? The Bible says at that time many will fall away. And they'll betray one another and hate one another. Okay, it says that we'll be hated by all nations because of my name in verse 9. In verse 10, at that time many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Okay, folks, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing people beginning to betray and beginning to hate each other. Some of them base it on political views, but folks, it's not just politics, okay? It's not because one is a Republican and one is a Democrat. It's the issues that surround politics, and in many of them, it's the conservative issues of the Christian, the desire to hold on to their faith, the desire to hold on to their Bible, the desire to walk in Christian principles, that is being starting to pit one side against the other side and people are beginning to hate the Christian, the conservative, the one that doesn't want to go forward with the New World Order. And we see a New World Order that's coming, a socialist, Marxist, communist type of government that's going to set the stage for a one world, folks, a dictator, a one world ruler that's going to be the Antichrist. And that's already being set up here, okay, but at the same time there is a war between good and between evil, between the things of Satan and the things of Christ. And folks, we, those of us, do you that are watching, the believers, those of us that are true remnants are following the things of the Lord and there's a hatred uh, that's beginning to take place, a hatred of the things and the values of God, okay? And it says many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. Now listen to this. Verse 12, because wickedness is increased or lawlessness is increased, okay, or abounds, 
Okay, the love of many will grow cold. Folks, we are seeing the love of many grow cold. We're becoming so used to things that years ago we would have been horrified if we saw them on the news or read them in the paper. That today they're an everyday occurrence. We see them every day. We turn on the news, we see rioting in the streets, we see people kicked in the head for no reason at all, people assaulted, people beat, people killed. We see all types of things in our own country here in the United States of America taking place and nowadays we sit back and we watch these things and we hardly bat an eye. We, we, we look at them. In the 70s or 80s, people would have been appalled. One incident that had taken place, I remember the Manson killing. You heard about it on every channel, on every news station in the country, in every newspaper for months and months and months. But nowadays, the things that are happening that exceed those type of atrocities, they're taking place every day and sometimes and people hardly bat an eyelash and in some instances it doesn't even make the paper. But folks, the things that we're seeing now, we're seeing rampant wickedness and evilness taking place in the world today. Okay, <clears throat> the world tells us though that when those things come, the love of many would grow cold. Then it goes on to say, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. I want to say to you this morning, folks, that it's so important that we endure to the end, that we keep our faith, that we keep our relationship, that we maintain our walk with God, that we don't allow ourselves to drift away, to become lukewarm with one foot in and one foot out. Folks, just some of, some of you, your churches are still closed down. I encourage you, open your churches and go, all right? If you can't go, meet somewhere, but don't forsake the fellowship and gathering, the gathering of the saints. Some say, well, you know, I'm fine. We can do this online. People that do this online, folks, when you're not in the fellowship of the saints, many times you begin to isolate yourself. One of the advantages in coming together is being able to pray for one another uh, and not just hearing the word for yourself, but being able to minister and give to others just as others give to you. And maybe the day will come, I'm sure that it will come, when we'll be meeting underground uh, and, and, and it'll be unlawful even, declared as an unlawful assembly to even meet. But folks, the, the time is coming for us to really make a stand and churches are beginning to do it and getting together and meeting anyway. Despite what I think is, um, let's just say that the issue of COVID, although it is real, I don't take anything away from it, it has been overblown. You know what? We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit with us, okay? So let's continue, okay? And I really do believe God will protect us. Okay, but in the day that all these happens, verse 13, the one who endures to the end, he'll be saved. But before that happens, the love of many will go cold. And it tells us that, that many it will, uh, will be misled by false prophets. It also tells us that many will betray one another and that many will fall away from the faith as we've just read. Then for verse 14, I love this. Listen to me, folks. Despite all the things, all the things that are happening and that are going on today, the Bible tells us this, and read verse 14, and you might even want to underline it. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then, and then the end shall come. Folks, the gospel is gonna be preached. The Bible says that the world, it will lift its hand up against the church, but will not prevail against it. Jesus said, I will build my church and, and that the world, that nothing in the world, not the evil of the world, not the devil, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so I wanna encourage you this morning where we're at. Folks, the church is not being torn down. God is still, still building his church today and the gates of hell are not gonna prevail about it. But where are you today? And where are we today? Start your day off with your focus on the Lord Worship the Lord. Plead the blood of Jesus over your spirit, 
over your, which is the part of you that communes with God, over your soul, which is your mind, your understanding, over your physical body, and begin to plead God's blood. Believe him for healing. Believe him for protection. Believe him for restoration. Every morning when I get up, I plead the blood of Jesus. Then I start the day off and say, leave me, Lord, where you want to lead me. Take me where you want me to go and direct me. So I pray that this morning the study has blessed you. Uh, when I started out, nobody was here, so I thought I might be able to get through this before we get any construction going. But we've got not construction, but just some things, some modifications taking place. As for those that are signing on that didn't hear, uh, my family and I, we have moved to Yuma, Arizona. We are in the process of still moving and getting things done here, a little bit of remodeling, some changes that we wanna make. I'm here to have, and sitting here with my, by myself in Yuma, uh, having this done for a few days, and then making trips back to California. And I want those that are in California to know that we will continue our ministry in California as we have been. Um, <clears throat> we may uh, space out our visits a little bit more because we're also going to be believing for God to open up doors here in Arizona. It's time to continue to spread the word, get it to other places. But I will continue my online uh, study in the word broadcast and I will continue to travel to California and to minister there, okay? Um, so listen, I pray that the Lord blesses you and I wanna close with a uh, word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for the morning study and the word that you've given me today. Lord, that you've given all of us. And I pray this morning, Lord, that some take their cup of coffee, some get on their drive and begin to go to work, Lord. That you'll illuminate their day, remind them of the world that we live in today. Lord, your promises for the future. Lord, that we can walk away with a smile on our face knowing that God has everything under control. Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen. This is Apostle Misha Safi, and I want to thank you for joining me this morning in studying the Word. And I want to ask you to do me a favor. If you have a, 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 a share button and you believe these messages would benefit others, okay, hit your share button with others so they can hear the Word of God. Go back and listen to some of our prior teachings. You can also find these on YouTube under my name, Misha Safi. That's M I S C H A. S is in Sam, A is in Adam, F is in Frank, D is in David, I is in Indian, E is in Edward. And throughout Facebook, right now, anyway, you'll be able to hear my messages, okay? So I pray that God will bless you with these studies. And remember, I'm not trying to preach at you. These are just informal studies in the Word that we can do it together. That's why I'm doing this and allowing them to do construction and, and just uh, trying to relate and just have some time with you that are out there listening. We can study the Word of God together, okay? So I want to again thank you. Keep your feet to the ground, your head to the sky, and keep praising the Lord. May God bless you, and I'll see you Tuesday night at 8 p.m. and studying the Word. God bless. Amen.